I'd like to ask to come up to the stage Dr. Ernst Stahl, Director of EB Research, G uh, GmbH, and Competence Center Digital and Payment Center, and Henning Brandt, Head of Communications for Public Relations, Head of Public Relations at CompuTop. Hello and welcome. Okay, so we're still waiting for the second person. Henning, so you sat next to me yesterday evening at the dinner. How did the evening um, continue? Well, um, let's see what I can actually tell you right now, what the public can know. I'm just kidding. We had a great dinner. We had a great DJ. A lot of people danced. We had a nice visit to the old timer museum and i have a feeling that the later it got the more people went out to catch some fresh air and there are rumors that the party went wild afterwards i don't know if that's true i just heard this so maybe you should ask the people that were actually or stayed there until very late um, welcome, Dr. Stahl. It's great to have you here. So, you thing is financial services and trade. You've been working in this sectors for a long time. Just look back at the last 10 years. What changes can we observe? Okay, so none of us is bored. We're still working hard. When SEPA came, we thought that we would have less work and could relax a little bit, but it was quite the opposite. After that, we request for payment came and a lot of other developments. So we always have something to do. And that's also the reason why we as a research institute say that in order to forecast the future even better, we have to take into account much more details and aspects. Okay, so you, Henning, you work together with the EB Research Institute. Why do you work together with them? Well, um, the teamwork is a little bit difficult, but it's not EB's fault. The teamwork is complicated because the research that we do is complicated. The topic that we research on is complicated. There are a lot of information that we need to process, that we need to evaluate from our transaction data. So if, if we take a look at all these data, it looks quite intuitive and easy. But if you go deeper into detail, it's actually quite difficult to get to results and that's why we're really glad to have such an experienced partner like Dr. Ernst Stahl and the EB Research Institute that cooperates with us. Okay, okay. Um, just for all of you, um, again, real quick, Ralf Gladys is in the room next to us. He's presenting um, a talk about fraud prevention. So if you want to switch rooms, feel free to do so. <laughs> so I would like to hear the audience's opinion. What do you think? What is the amount of successful transactions when it comes to mobile payments? Who says it's less than 10%? OK, nobody believes that. Who thinks that it's 10 to 25% successfully managed transactions via mobile payment? 10 to 25%? No one? No one? Okay, we have two people, three people, four people, thank you. More than 50%. Okay, now I want to see your hands. Okay, so thank you for participating. And you will tell us right now why we actually asked or just ask the audience about their opinion. That's right, we talk about the CompuTop payment study. 
And we have thought about evaluating the stored data for a long time. We wanted to gain new insights into the e-commerce and payment sectors. And one thing stood out to us. We're talking about real data here. So as a payment service provider, we have a lot of data about transactions. In the most surveys that we can observe in the market, you hear about percentages, um, so many people um, pay um, or use this payment method. So there are a lot of surveys, and people put a lot of effort into creating these surveys. They are really elaborate, and we gain a lot of insights from um, about the merchant's perspectives, but also about the consumer's perspectives. However, if people really go shopping, you don't know if they will still do the same that we forecasted in our studies. So um, reality and surveys always differ a bit. You can never know this for sure. So in order to find out if there are differences between the results of the surveys and the behavior of the customer, um, this is the reason why we do these surveys with real data. And this doesn't happen a lot because not many people own these data. And especially they don't know these information if it goes beyond their own borders and beyond their own customers. And organizing and creating such a survey on an international level is even harder. So um, most often it's the last option carrying out a study. And that's why we wanted to actually evaluate interesting questions when it comes to the payment transaction. And we wanted to use real data. So I think we can actually present some real interesting results to you now. When the new iBusiness ranking came out, um, that was quite a thing. 40 of the top e-commerce merchants are also um, on our list. So we kind of cover the market very well, and we can transmit a realistic image of what is going on on the market. So what did we do? We anonymized the data because, of course, we would have anonymized the data without the GDPR as well. However, we're talking about real data, real data from consumers and from merchants, and this is nothing that you can publish if it's not anonymized. So EB works with our servers. Our data, the data that we store, doesn't leave our servers. EB comes to us to evaluate the data, and this is how we want to contribute to the GDPR. So, of course, we also have to exclude some transaction groups. This is a great effort for us. Sometimes there are specific customers or merchants that could actually uh, falsify a result, a result. That's why we have to exclude some of them. And of course, we work on an international level. And that's why we have to take into account different currencies. So we, what we did was taking into account all these different currencies and also convert all of them by the 31st of December of 2018. Just for our efficiency, we reduced this a little bit. And we, we also look, took a look at different uh, consumer behaviors in different countries. So if you read the name of a certain country right now, it doesn't mean that we went to this country. It was just, it just, it's about a German 
consumer or customer that um, bought something from an online shop abroad, for example. So I want to give the microphone to Mr. Stahl right now. Okay, just some quick words about EB Research. We try to connect science and research and um, practice. It was a huge effort, not only for EB, but also for Computop. Ralf Gladys mentioned it yesterday. It was a great effort to gather all these data from these different points. So thank you to our colleagues who made this possible. We wanted to actually do research and present new information. We are a GmbH. We have a huge partner network. You can see some of the companies that we work together with here. So if you're interested in partnering up with us, just contact us at any time. I will continue right away with information on our sample, on our total sample. We split it up. We talk about 170 million transactions that were successful. So we didn't include the cancelled transactions. So 75% are from the services sector, 28% are from the entertainment sector, and you could also analyze it in looking at the specific countries. So you see the huge majority is from Germany, and these are the structures that Computop offers us. So it, like I just said, it was a great effort to gather all these information. Okay, so 46% for Germany is not really the emergent distribution that we have. Um, but Germany is our most important market. It's our home market. So what you can also see on this slide that the consumption and the customers um, are distributed worldwide. So what's the average shopping cart value? Uh, you can see a difference between the north and the south of Europe. So in the south of Europe, the shopping cart value is on average 100 euros. Germany is almost reaching this point and the more it goes into the south, the um, less is the value of the shopping cart. So if you take a look at the payment method, and if you match it with the shopping cart value, there are also some really interesting insights. So the average shopping cart value is about 100 euros. And um, people that pay with GiroPay spend 67% on average. 67 euros is their shopping cart value. And um, on the left side, the numbers are quite different. Okay, so this has to do with the question that we asked at the beginning. We ask you, what do you think? How many people use their smartphone to carry out payments? And we also took a look at the device that you use for your payments and which effect this has on your shopping cart value. So what you can see really clear is that the following. Just take a look at this slide. So on average, 
the shopping cart value is 118 euros if you pay with your mobile phone. And a section that stands out here is the textile sector. A lot of people prefer using their tablet here for their orders and for carrying out their payments. So we, what we can see here is that the shopping cart value is higher when people choose to pay with their tablet instead of paying with their mobile phone. And of course here, when you look at the pharmacy sector, the shopping cart amount is, of course, less there. We tried to categorize stationary devices, smartphones, and um, mobile devices. So you don't have to look at the figures too closely. However, you see that the most successful transactions are actually being carried out with stationary devices. And if you go back to the first question, mobile first is nothing that actually applies for the majority of the population. Because if you look at the figures, you see the opposite. So successful transactions with 9.7% are payments that are carried out with Trustly. So the percentage of mobile phones in successful transactions are 9.7% with Trustly. So mobile usage, meaning processing a transaction with your mobile phone is not as popular as you guessed it. So China is a role model when it comes to mobile payment. That's true. However, we in Germany have a long way to actually get there if we look at the figures. So credit card, PayPal are still more relevant than mobile payment. We talk about 7 to 8% here. These are realistic figures on how people actually use their mobile devices to carry out payments. So these are numbers where you could really say that CompuTop is at the top. But if we look at the figures, of um, the sectors where 3G Secure is actually applied, we have high values. We have an average of 18% in Germany. And last evening, we also talked to Ralf Gladys, and he says that one reason could be that CompuTop really motivated the merchants to integrate these processes. And yeah, I think it will be interesting. You should remember these figures because um, I think the 3G secure percentage will gain a popularity. And I hope it will become more popular. And I hope that we can actually reach 100% here. So 3D secure payments, um, there are some 3D secure payments that don't that don't meet the requirements. However, there's still a good opportunity for your processing activities. And I think it will be interesting to see how it develops further in the future. So let's take a look at the 3D secure transactions that were successful. And I think the numbers are positive here as well. So 80% on average, 80% of all 3D secure transactions are carried out without any problems. And in Germany, it's 73 
80% of all transactions. So if on average 80% of 3D secure transactions are carried out without problems, you might ask what's with the rest, what's with the other 20%. Um, this is due to um, act to different factors. Sometimes the transaction was not authorized. Sometimes it were other reasons. Uh, sometimes the project processes just paused, so the process wasn't even initiated. Sometimes the user was insecure and stopped the transaction at a certain point, and that's why the transaction was cancelled. And these are the 20% that are missing here. And something that is also talked about a lot, what's with the returns? Shouldn't we have a law which prohibits the elimination and destruction of returns? So let's talk about the return rates. So on average, we have a return rate of 13%, especially um, in the retail sector. In other sectors, it's, uh, for example, in the footwear sector, it's 40%. And I think it's a big number. It's not unlogical to me because, of course, shoes have to fit. If they don't fit, you return them. And a similar, to, we can see the similar situation when it comes to the textile industry. Um, they have around 30% of um, return. Uh, but on average, it's just 12%. So every six parcel is sent back. Just a small addition. So maybe the regulator should overthink or should think about creating a DIN norm for shoes and clothes as well because in that way you should or you could maybe prevent returns. Okay, so another interesting question is the following. I took a look at um, the hours and the time when people actually order products. So between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., we have a lot of people that actually use the entertainment sector. And in the other sectors, I think we have a quite equal distributions. Nothing good ever happens after 2 p.m. 2 a.m., sorry. Uh, were you surprised when you took a look at the times when consumers actually buy products? Well, I have never thought about it a lot. For me, like if I look at myself, I order products after work in the evening. However, it was interesting to see that half of all orders are placed during working hours. So the B2B sales were excluded from these questions because we only wanted to get information about our customers and not businesses. So you see our employers are really nice. They let us continue ordering during working hours. Yeah, so I think we can conclude a few things here. We can say that if we look at the German-speaking countries, um, uh, a lot of data from the German-speaking countries come from Computop. 
We had a lot of real-time data, a lot of real data. We tried to analyze it. However, it took us much more time than we thought because some problems come up during the process of the evaluation. And I think it was a great project. We got a lot of interesting facts and results. And we want to end with a small forecast. Okay, so if our world worked quicker, we probably would have all the results of this survey here right now. However, I hope you enjoyed listening to the first results. We will continue. Um, publishing more information. We will continue our research. We will collect new and more data and try to forecast what will happen after September of this year. So the study that focuses on 2019 will also be really interesting. And of course, another thing that we want to take a look at, but we need much more filter work here, we want to see how the payment methods are distributed. There are many surveys on this topic, and we want to actually double check how reality actually matches with the results of the survey. This will be part of the new studies that we will publish soon, and we are glad to present the results to all of our partners and customers soon. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stahl. Thank you, Henning. That was the last presentation for today. If you have a question right now, raise your hand or just say nothing until coffee break. Oh, OK. One person wants to say something. Hello, Sebastian Kunde from Cyberport. Hello, my name is Sebastian Kunde from Cyberport. Could you go back to the slide with the mobile transactions? I think I misunderstood it, maybe. Warum die Anteile so gering waren. Why the percentages were so little? why the percentages were so low. Okay, so this is the percentage of mobile transactions on all transactions. Okay, so with mobile, we're only talking about smartphone transactions, transactions that you carry out with your smartphones. Uh, we have other figures here, not for every payment method, but for PayPal, our share is much bigger, much, much bigger. Well, that could depend on the sector that you work in, also on your region, on the country. So we use a lot of data for these studies because we want to cover the whole market. If we took a closer look at specific branches, specific sectors, probably would have gotten another result. But this is the average percentage for the retail sector, for all sectors of the retail businesses. Thank you. Another question? OK, perfect. Then thank you very much. We'll meet again at the coffee table.